negative 45 degrees. That was the most extreme. <laughs> we went out tracting in negative 45 degrees and that was, that was freezing. <laughs> it was so great. <laughs> moose, there's a lot of moose in Maine. So we'd hear about people running over mo m moose, mooses. <laughs> um, and we, we'd sometimes, we'd pass them like on the road, we'd pass moose. Lots of tights, lots of things that are made of wool. <laughs> We'd sometimes wear three or four layers of tights and then two or three skirts and lots and lots of sweaters. So just pack a lot of layers, I think would be the best thing. Poutine, it's gotta be the favorite. Canada, of course. Um, French fries with gravy and cheese curds on top. It's really good. <laughs> I really didn't have any exotic food experiences. Um, I do know missionaries from my mission that would serve in Newfoundland and they'd have to eat like whole dead fish, like sardine type thing or like seal blubber. I don't know, just really gross things there. <laughs> I never had to experience that. So I probably the most exotic thing I'd eat was like mac and cheese that had lettuce in it. I don't know, like not really, <laughs> not really that exotic where I was at. We were attracting and we knocked on the door. It was, it was spring break, so there's no one home except the really old people. And so this, this man answers the door and he's not wearing a shirt and he's just wearing his boxers and he's probably in his 70s. And he just, he's very, he's either very drunk or very hungover. We're not very sure at this point, but it was like noon. So like, I don't know what that was about. But he just started like yelling at us in gibberish, no cohesive words, just in gibberish. And um, he kept trying to give us money because the Jehovah's Witnesses that would walk around, they would re like request money for their congregation. So people a lot of the time mistook us for Jehovah's Witnesses. And so they'd give us money to have us leave. Um, but we can't accept money as missionaries. And so we kept trying to tell him like, no, we can't accept this. But he kept shoving it in our face, yelling at us, and we didn't even know what he was saying. And then finally he reaches into my companion's coat pocket and puts the money in her coat pocket, like right, like <laughs> touching her basically. And, um, and she gets really uncomfortable and so she like takes it out like it's diseased and throws it on the ground and we run away because we're like afraid that he's gonna like come and get a gun because this is Maine. He's gonna come and get a gun, he's gonna shoot us. But yeah, because he was very drunk so we had no idea what he was gonna do. But that was probably the craziest experience. Not very crazy, but that was, that was the craziest thing that happened on my mission. <laughs> I learned the importance of the plan of salvation and the importance of family. That was probably one of the biggest lessons I learned um, that the greatest calling for us to have is to be a family, to have a spouse and to have kids. Like, I didn't really want to be married before my mission. I didn't want that life. And then going on my mission and understanding the plan of salvation um, just made me realize how integral that is in God's plan and how much joy we can get from achieving that. That was the greatest thing I learned. The hardest thing would be have to, having to come early, home early, um, but not in the way that I thought it was gonna be. I thought that it would be hard in regards that people would be mean to me, like to my face, and like I would just be met with a lot of adversity that way with people like in front of me and I really haven't had anyone say anything rude to me honestly that they've like maliciously meant to do that I've heard you know throwaway comments here and there but um the adversary was the worst part of it um just having satan in your head just telling you like that you're a failure that you you didn't serve a full mission all that gross stuff but so that was probably the hardest thing I had to overcome was Satan's thoughts and um, and I was only able to overcome it through my own experiences and through the atonement and yeah. And there's a girl I taught in my first area um, and she was baptized. We taught her, she was taught previously by missionaries and then things just happened to work out. 
when we were there, she was able to be baptized. So we retaught her the lessons and she was baptized. Um, she had two small kids um, and she was just recently married. And I remember at her baptism when she came up out of the water, it felt like I was having like, not a vision necessarily. I don't want to say that I was having a vision, but it was a very clear impression that both me and my companion, we talked about it later and we both had the same experience, was just seeing their family down the road and having their two little boys go and serve missions and having them serve faithfully in the church. And it was just a really sweet experience for me to see and to feel the fruits of the labor and seeing people who were in a really terrible situation and they did something really good and down the road they're going to have so much better and it was a really amazing thing to think about her two boys serving a mission and like I don't know it was just a really spiritual experience for me um, that was I think this where the spirit was the strongest on my mission was in that moment um, was seeing her come out of the water.